Well, Joan, who are we? We are Quilters HQ, Windmill Sewing Center, and Sewing Machines Express. The websites are quiltershq.com, windmillsewingcenter.com, and QHQ, the number two.com. We do this every Tuesday from 6 to 7 Central Time and hope that you can join us every week because we give you all kinds of sewing tips and inspiration and I have a really good one coming up soon. I'll tell you more later. So I want like to introduce Nicole Moore. <laughs> so much more. Yes. So I have a website and it's so much more.com. That's S E W much M U C H M O O R E. It's kind of a play on my last name. So my name is Nicole Moore and you can find um, all of my everything on so much more. So I'm so glad to be here. We've known each other for a really long time. I bought my first Juki from you. Well, not my very first, my industrial Juki I bought before you guys were even in town. Yes. And then when I found you, I bought my J350, mm -hmm. and then I bought a TL 2010, and then I bought my mom a serger and a cover stitch, and the rest is history. The rest is history. Yes. Nicole has so. been a great supporter for um, us and uh, helping us along our way. So. Yeah. Yeah, we just That's like to cool. hang out together, too. It's fun. <laughs> so we're going to be, well, uh, we, Nicole is going to be sewing curves today. She is going to use AccuQuilt. She designed this beautiful quilt behind us. This is the turntables quilt. Um, and this uses the new colors from Paintbrush Studios. Yeah, they just released 42 different shades to add to their collection. So now there's a total of 210 shades, and you are stocking all of them. All of them. All of them. They have a huge color wall here. So um, all of the shades are available here by Quilters HQ. Um, I did a bright version back there in the in the background. If you like more of a brighter palette, um, that speaks to me a little like, more. Bam. I know, I like right? It. Bam, right in your face. <laughs> it's yeah. So this they look they they both look like they have black background, but that is that is ebony, and this is called oh gosh, it's called not stone. No, it's I'll I'll look at the pattern. So um, there is a pattern for the. Uh, for that quilt, it's called Turntables. And they have that here, you can order that here. It is called Iron. Iron is the name of that. Iron. Yes, it's one of their new colors. So, um, but I'm gonna show you how to sew curves. And in the pattern, I'll show you, they do have, I do have a template available that you can cut out. So there is the convex and the con, the convex and concave. Yeah, yeah. I believe it is. I call it inner and outer because that's how I talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's how I say it. So then you can you can certainly use the template and cut those out. Um, but I love using the AccuQuilt cutting system. And so there is a die that fits this um, pattern really well. And it is, I'm trying to think what the name of the die is. This is what the die looks like. Drunkard's Path. It's okay. the Drunkard's Path, but there's a number for it. I don't know what it, it is. It is 55034. 55034. And so what's nice about this is um, it does give you the, the little notches to match up. And so I'm going to do a really quick demonstration on how to use the AccuQuilt cutting system. And we're going to use these two different contrasting fabrics to kind of show you. And I think that AccuQuilt likes to, um, thank you. I think AccuQuilt recommends only a couple different layers when you're cutting. I usually break the rules and do more than I should, though. Six. It's six, six. layers. Okay. Well, we're going to um, probably cut more than we need, but I'm just going to lay this all on top of here. Now, in the, in the pattern, I give you some really good illustrations on how to use a cutting system and how to lay things out to maximize um, your fabric or to minimize waste. There we go. It's kind of at an angle. And you do want to follow the angle on Correct, because if you, you're right, because see, it's, if, you go, if you go straight, you're not going to go on the grain of the fabric. So you're going to want to follow the angle. Right? Right. Yeah. Let's see. So I'm just lining that up. I probably don't even need to fold it, but we're just going to use all of the fat quarter because we have a whole bunch of fabric at our fingertips, don't we? Right. And 
Oh, I could do some damage in this shop, Joan. <laughs> <laughs> it's super easy. Yeah. Okay, so then you lay that out and then it has um, this acrylic, what do you call this? Is it a, a carrier thing or? Mat, like cutting yeah, mat. Yeah, cutting mat. Well, sort of cutting mat, but. So this is the um, AccuQuilt Go. Hi, Linda from Arizona. And you just welcome. feed it through. Am I moving the... Nope, I got it. You're okay. Good. Keep going. There we go. And then they recommend that you twist it off so that it comes out easily. Now, I haven't cleaned this die out and I used it a million times, so hopefully, yeah, it's perfect. See how easy that cuts out? It's so much easier if you use the die, but if you don't have the die, you can certainly use the template at the back of the pattern. So that, just to show you how easily that's cut. Did I not get it on the fold? There we go. So we're gonna put these together. This right here contrasting. And so many people are kind of afraid of sewing curves. I know I was. When I first started sewing, I thought it was really intimidating until I tried it. And I was really surprised about how easy it was once you try it. So let me just show you what I do to make a sewn curve. I like to use pins. There's lots of different ways that you can do it, but I like to use pins. And so the first thing that I do is I line up the center right here, and they have the little um, notch that's cut out with the Accu quilt. But you can also, if you don't use the Accu quilt, you can fold it in half and give yourself a little fold. I'm gonna show you right here. There's a little fold, and then you can put those two together. Now these are solid, so I'm not worried about wrong side or right side, but if you're using prints, you're gonna to wanna to put right sides together. So then I just pin the middle like that. And then you're gonna bend it, and I align the sides. And I, a lot of people think this is overkill, but it's, I found a lot of success by pinning it right there, and then I pin it right here. That's a little pin. It's a baby pin. It's a baby pin. <laughs> and then again on this side. So I have more pins than most people use, but I, like I said, I've found success. When I don't pin on the side, then sometimes my curve doesn't come out right, and then my seams don't match the way I want them to when a circle comes together, because on the pattern, there are several circles that come together. And so what we're making right here is this block. And then you make, you know, all of them come together to become a circle. Or like my son says, not my son, my husband, he says it looks like a Pac-Man quilt. <laughs> <laughs> my son has no idea who Pac-Man is. So. All right, so it kind of looks like this, like kind of poofy and still intimidating, right? Like how am I going to make this all lay down flat so that I can sew it together. And it's really, all it takes is patience and practice. So what you do, and I'm using a um, quarter inch foot right here, which helps because everything is sewn at a quarter of an inch. I just move that up and I'm gonna take it slow. Thank you. I'm gonna take it down to a turtle speed. And because it's kind of, it's kind of like you cut it on the bias, right? So your fabric is able to be maneuvered as you, as you sew to the curve, the next pin. So I'm just taking it slow, making sure I don't have a fold. if anybody watching likes to sew curves. I first learned how to sew curves from a workshop that I took with my local guild and I, I tell you what, just you just have to try it. Yeah, we've had quite a few comments on people that have sewn circles. You know, I, um, I really was talking with some folks. I'm also a member of the American Sewing Guild and they sew a lot of garments, and they say it's kind of like sewing 
um, an armhole. Yep. Yeah. And of course, I learned how to sew a little bit backwards than everybody else. I didn't learn how to sew garments first. All right, and so there, I need to press it a little bit. Oh, thank you. The handy dandy doohickey. Okay, tell me about this. Do I do like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have one of these. You're going to have to tell me about this later. What is this? No, we can just talk about it. <laughs> what is this? This is, this is the multi-function finger presser tool. It's a and horrible name. We're pretty sure that the people in the marketing meeting for this <laughs> were maybe like, been drinking. Well, there's like they wanted an acronym. Does it spell something? I mean, what is this? I don't think it does. Okay. But we had a customer, and she just named it the doohickey. The yes. doohickey. Give me the doohickey. So is this, this brings, this puts the little quilting marks or whatever? Yeah, you can use it as a stylus. And this is the poker thing for the bags. I like it. Turning your points out. I need to get one of those. It is a very handy tool. Yes. It saves you from walking to the iron. How much are they? Seven ninety nine, I believe. It's a bargain. It's a bargain. So we're going to do a contrasting one. So there's that one. Easy enough. And on the back, you'll see here's the seam, and you can you know uh, press it to the inside, press it to the outside. If I'm going to join these two together, the next one together, I'm going to want to make sure the other ones pressed the other way so that you can nest your seams. So let's do another one. A lot of people are wanting this dye. Are they? So. Okay, well, we let me talk about pricing while she's do, doing that. So the pattern for this lovely quilt, and you could do that in your own colors, or you could get a kit from us. We could get this for you. Um, the pattern is $12. And so comment, make it mine, turntables. And then we are giving you a special price on the dye tonight. Normally... The die is $84.99 and we are selling it to you for $74.99. Comment, make it mine, 55034 or comment, Drunkard's Path. Yeah, I would and recommend it. How do they order from us? If that, there's a lot of new viewers so on So there's right a lot now, of new so. people on. So when you say comment, make it mine and what the item is, because we'll have a couple of more things too as well. But um, so what that does... We will ask you to go to our website, quiltershq.com, and register for Joan Sews. And when we have your information, we will email you an invoice, and you can pay with either PayPal or credit card. And then once we have that, if you're not local, we will ship it to you. Shipping is uh, $5.99. And um, if you're local, we will just give you a call when your order is ready to pick up. Super one of, easy. One of Nicole's friends has wanted to give her a shout out, Miranda. Miranda. Miranda West. Hey, yes. girl. Hey, Miranda. Yeah, we all know Miranda. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Well, where Miranda is, Amber's close by. Is Amber on there, too? Um, I haven't seen Amber jump oh. on here yet. So I am using the Juki Teal. 18, 18 QVP. And this is, if you um, have seen me sew before, this is a lot like the 2010, but it's um, it's even better. Hang on, i got to figure out which way I'm doing this. I'm going to put these together. So I've already pressed this one out. I'm going to press the next one in. So like I was saying, this is the Juki Teal 2010, Teal 18. Teal 18. QVP. I, don't, I never say that enough. So Teal 2010 Q uh, just <laughs> falls out of my mouth. It's so natural. But this is the Teal 18 QVP. It's a lot like mine, but it does have some additional features that I am really jealous of. Would you like to iron What's that? your price on that? On the Teal 20... The 18. The Teal 18, 18. Mm -hmm. is $14.99. $14.99. Yep. It is, um, one of the, what's different about my machine and this machine is that it has the, um, what is this mm -hmm. called? Micro lifter? Yes. The micro lifter. And you guys know, if you don't, I'm a bag maker and this is a perfect machine for not only piecing and quilting, um, but also for making bags or going over thick materials. The micro lifter lifts up the foot 
so that it can overcome some of the thickness that you might experience when you're making bags, you know, sewing several layers of foam, vinyl, and it's, it's a, a, workhorse, a workhorse just like all TL models, and it also has a slew of feet. Oh, a ton, of, ton yeah. of feet. We have a smaller lady who watches the show a lot, so we want to give a shout out to Cheyenne. Hi, Cheyenne. Hi, Cheyenne. So, um, I don't know, I could, I could sew curves all day. This, um, you know, it used to be kind of a pain when I was uh, cutting with the template. A lot of people, like, if you're going to use the template to cut, then you're going to want to, I use scissors. A lot of people mm -hmm. use their rotary blade, but if you get a nice pair of sharp scissors, I think it works just fine. Um, but I've, my, my preference is the AccuQuilt die. It is just so much easier. I mean, look we've how, done <laughs> look in how one easy foul swoop. It is to cut with AccuQuilt. I mean, yeah, and and you know, oh, Rick. when you're when you're cutting squares and rectangles, that's one thing. But when you're cutting curves, it's very efficient. Very efficient. Amber has now joined and says hello. Hey, there's Amber. We were wondering when Amber's going to come on. This is turning out really. I like the it. colors that you chose. One of the viewers was on, and she's doing a block of the month where you learn to do curves, and so she's oh. really enjoying kind of getting into learning how to do the curves. Yes. Now there's more than one way to do curves, and and I've seen several people use like a glue pen, um, and you know like one of those sew line glue pens, and use that instead of pins. That works too. Um, Whenever I use a glue pen, though, it's really difficult to, some people like to press their seams open, and you can't really do that if you're using a glue pen, because your seams are glued shut. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> All right, so that goes there. This is pressed out. I need to press this in. I'm just minding which direction. Are you my presser? I am. I am. I have a presser. That's what I'm missing in my home studio is a presser. So now we have to work an extra day of the week. You gotta come set and press. <laughs> that would, sounds like a robber job. I would right. rather if we're if we're if we're doing duties for other people. I would rather have a cutter. Oh, a cutter. Oh. Yeah, I mean, this is a great. That's for me. That's I don't know about the you. The job guys. description has completely morphed now. I know. <laughs> so. I, know. I would rather have some cutter cut. slash presser. Yeah. Presser slash Just cutter. sewing assistant. <laughs> right. That's as it's like a sous chef now, right? Oh, so don't forget the picker in case you mess oh, up somebody to yes. rip out oh, for you. The, the seam ripper person. Seam ripper person. Mm, yes. Yeah. I don't know. That job is. That's a. That's, an that's a tough job. Mm -hmm. All we really want to do is sew. Right. None yeah. of the other stuff. Pressing. I think cutting is my least favorite part. I don't know about you guys watching, but tell me what your least favorite part about the sewing process. I love the I love the piecing process. Um, like if I'm making a quilt, I love. I don't mind cutting the binding and making the binding and pressing it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I don't like hand binding. I love the effect of it, but I don't like actually doing it. Whenever I have a quilt to bind, I magically need to go visit my mom, who's three <laughs> hours away who loves binding and we and I bring several quilts and I'll sit there and I'll do one but I'll give her another she does really she does it really fast hi so Cecilia how are you tonight at it. have you seen my video about how to bind a quilt with the TL and the the uh, 1.5 millimeter compensating foot no I'm gonna have to go um, well I am subscribed to your channel but I haven't seen that one I need to go check it out because now I'm intrigued. You sew both sides at once. So, but don't you have to have a guide for that? The compensating foot is the guide. Oh. So then what is the the inches that you cut your binding? Because I'm normally at two and a half. It'd be less, right? Two inches and you use... Um, you use less fabric. A one inch binding folder. Or, I don't know what to call them. Yeah, bias, one of those little... Bias tape makers, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. One inch. And then you fold it in half, and you have this nice half-inch binding around your quilt, and you can sew both sides at once. Uh, Debbie said she hates cutting, just wants to sew. 
Yeah. I think I hate doing the borders the most. I don't mind making the quilt, but when it comes, I have so many quilts at that stage. And I'm thinking I might just, you know, not do borders anymore. Borders are for the birds. <laughs> You know, are there any of, other sizes? On if you'll there, notice, are. there there are no borders on this quilt. There are no borders, you're right. So <laughs> it is a quilt made for Joan. Perfect. I should have called it Joan's quilt. <laughs> no, I think turntable is appropriate. Um, there are other sizes. Let me see if I can grab a catalog real quick. Most people don't like binding. See, I don't mind putting the binding on. Like I put it on with machine, and but I don't like it finishing it by hand, but now I want to try Joan's technique. I'm, I'm intrigued. Carla, I, you're never late. You always make an entrance. <laughs> She's here. <laughs> All right, so I'm just sewing these together. Look, I have matching points. Don't you love it? Matchy, matchy. This will be a cute little mini quilt, or I could just keep going. I have all of these other curves. I think I've only sewn together one side. This will make, um, yeah, I think you need a half yard to make um, four of these, right? Oh, Julie. Jen says she doesn't like pressing either. She's not on the pressing bandwagon. She's wagon. not. She's, she's team no pressing. All right, that's too slow. And Miranda says she's with Joan. She does not like the borders. Are you talking about AccuQuilt? Yep. They have a four and a half or is it three and a half? They have uh, one other that's size. I couldn't remember if it was a four inch or a three inch. Yeah. So there's the other side. Matched perfectly. <laughs> By the way. By the way. <laughs> I'm trying to, now, now that I've got these together, I'm going to um, make sure that one seam is pressed one way because we like to nest our seams and one's pressed the other way. I'm going to use our fancy doohickey. Is that what we there call it? There you go, yep. Mm -hmm. So we get to have some fun with that. There we go. So Nicole is using the, the Juki Teal 18 tonight. Uh huh. This is the Juki Teal 18. It's a straight stitch sewing machine. It sews at 1,500 stitches per minute. It goes super fast, but you don't have to sew that fast if you don't want to. It has, I have it on Speed Bunny. Hi, uh, Judith. How are you tonight? A bunny or a tortoise? A hair, or a tortoise or the hair? They make that dye in seven inch, four inch, and three and a half inch. Nice. Oh, I didn't know that they had three. Mm hmm Okay. And that machine goes for fourteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it comes with a slew of uh, feet. Yeah, a lot of feet. And it has. It comes with a table. It comes with a table. Mm -hmm. And my favorite feature you were talking about for bags. Yes, and the micro lifter right here. Micro you turn this up or down, it raises the whole, um, not the bar, but presser just foot. the whole the whole presser foot goes up or down with mm -hmm. that. And it also has um, this metal piece right here, which just is great for just the longevity of the machine. Other models are going right into um, the base. So Well, this you can also attach. So Bye. the nice thing about these is you can attach some of the industrial tools. So mm -hmm. there's like a little T gauge. So if you're sewing clothing, mm -hmm. you can get your five and a five quarter eights. or five mm -hmm. eighths mm -hmm. inch, uh, five and a quarter. Oh. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter inch seam. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's, you know. Well, you just never know if you need too much or whatever. You can turn that down later. Yeah. But so you can attach tools like a binding attachment and um, I heard Juki was looking for one that's going to work really well with this machine. A binding attachment? A binding attachment. So one yeah. of the real ones. But you got to have another stand. Um, if you use the method that I showed you with the, well, with the video with the compensating foot, I mean, it literally, the name of the video is How to Bind a Quilt in 15 Minutes. Yeah, that sounds like, that sounds like something that's right up my alley. I'm excited about that. What uh, die are we using tonight? Which size? The seven inch. So we're using the seven inch tonight, Jude. Oh, look perfect. how pretty. Oh, look at that. It's radioactive. It is a turntable. Yeah. Well, it is. I mean, it's this is this is traditionally called the Drunkard's Path quilt block. Mm -hmm. And so we've just sewn curves together. 
on my pattern, I just use the the curved part is the did we say it was iron? Iron. Iron is the dark. And then on the bright one, I think I just used ebony. So yeah, super fun and easy. Yeah, the iron one is Love just beautiful the way it came together too. The color is amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We had um we had a little contest on Instagram. I'm on Instagram a lot at so much more is my handle. And so we, a lot of people wanted to name it Pac-Man, but of course there's <laughs> trademark issues. Yeah. yeah. Might be a copyright trouble. on that, you know, but. Definitely a phone call. Yes. Maybe even a letter. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe even a letter. Cease and desist, something like that. Something like that. Something like that. So, yeah. I think turntable works perfect. It and does. it turns out beautiful. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Well, I haven't made uh, one of these, so you've inspired me. I might actually give it a try. Yeah. So that turned out really nice. Thank you. Thanks. So um, what I would do is like like I just did multiple multiple of these. Mm -hmm. I think I think that like even in the pattern, I show you if you're going to use the die, I show you. I have cutting instructions for, like if you're gonna use the template, let me open this up. And I also have a QR code in the pattern and it takes you to a website that gives you the video that I just demonstrated here. So that if you're not quite sure what we talked about today and need to look at this again, you can watch Joan's video or you can check out the QR code here. And then I do have illustrations that give you specific instructions on using a cutting system and how to lay your fabric and even how to cut if you're going to use a cutting system. So there's a cutting table for yardage and then there's a cutting table for a cutting system. So that kind of helps you along the way. Um, I really recommend using the die with this pattern just because it just makes it so much more fun for me because I like it, like I've told you before, I'm not a big fan of cutting, so. Well, and if you've watched the show for a while, you know, I'm not exaggerating when I say, if I can't cut it out with AccuQuilt, I'm probably not going to make it. <laughs> it just takes too much time. I don't have a lot of time. None of us have a lot of time. It's it's so, definitely a time saver. It's a busy world that we live in, and if there is anything, so some people would say this is cheating. My grandmother would say we knew progress when we saw it. Yeah, I mean, we, we're we not using the uh, cereal boxes as templates anymore. Nope. You know, and I, is... I actually don't even know what that was like because I didn't start sewing. Is there sewing. a decoder wheel in there? I have done it, and it is not fun. So, <laughs> right? you know, put up a heart emoji if you love using the cereal box templates. <laughs> <laughs> or the crickets emoji. <laughs> Or the crickets emoji. Right, because right, that's Saying, you know, Yeah, no. what are you talking about? Yeah, nobody loves that. Did you get one? To... I'm surprised that I went through, yeah, I only caught one little thread here. Do you mm -hmm. have the scissors? Yeah. This one little thread's going to bother me. So does that micro lifter help um, for the rag quilts as well? Because we've yes. got several customers doing the rag quilts. They get a Those are thick. thick. So All that fleece. Getting through there mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. really provides yep. you some extra space there. And so it gives you probably another sixteenth of an inch. So I have it up, and the presser foot is down. You can see that. Uh -huh. And so you can see how much there is quite a bit of room that that gives you. So when you're sewing, you really want the feed dogs to be pulling whatever you're sewing through, whether you're using a walking foot in the feed dogs or just uh -huh. the feed dogs themselves. I see so many people doing these and you're bending your needle mm -hmm. and so you're going to get less consistent results in sewing you're going to get skip stitches you're going to get nesting anytime you have to assist your project through the sewing machine you're going to get questionable results and it could be anything from you know nesting or you're shredding your thread or just it won't go through and you end up breaking your needle and that's a whole hot mess that nobody wants to deal with. So having this available, and then you still use your presser foot pressure. Even if you're, you know, using very, very thick fabric, you still want to raise your presser foot pressure yeah. to make sure that the machine is pulling the fabric through, not you're helping it go through. 
We do we do have someone who did jump in. Vicky uses the cereal boxes as templates. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so, I have I've never done that before. Um, like I was saying that like I started sewing and quilting after the rotary cutter was invented. Mm -hmm. And so um, you know, I feel like kind of spoiled in that sense and not really understand like, you know, what everyone went through and you know how how much easier it is now. I've just always known it to be that way. So, but now this, you know, is like a step up from yeah. all of that. <laughs> yeah. I was always heavy handed with the pencil. And so my cereal box got smaller. I mean, it would oh, curl up mm -hmm. on the sides. Yeah. So, you know, that always led to some... Hmm, Results that were not consistent. Yeah, Let's call it that. Your blocks so you are getting giant smaller. Crayola. <laughs> yeah. So are you are you cutting on the outside of the line or the inside of the well, line? I always had problems. Depends with that. on how mm -hmm. how uh, how far down in the pattern you are. So yeah. When I um, before I used the AccuQuilt to make, I think I don't remember. I think it was this one that I made some of the no one of the two. I just made used the paper template, and so you know the. The pattern has it where I traced it out on, um, it's not cardboard, but it's the, uh, it's the comic book board. Mm -hmm. It's like thicker, you know? And so I cut it out on that. I traced it on that and I use that because I found that if I um, try to cut around a regular piece of paper that my template gets smaller and smaller and smaller because I'm always like shaving a little bit off. You know, uh, we would like to thank Nicole for coming yes. in and showing. I mean, I had so much fun tonight. Showing us such a beautiful quilt. Oh, it was great. And it was great. inspiring all of us. I liked too. your idea about using the batiks. That'd be fun too. Everyone, give a shout out to Nicole um, for all the content tonight. Well, as always, we kind of talk about uh, some of the tips for your sewing machine to always check. Yep. When you have a problem. When you have a problem, change your needle, check your thread path, check your bobbin. Clean out that bobbin clean area. Clean out the bobbin area. Um, but definitely re-thread the re -thread machine. Re-thread the machine. There's a lot of points change on there. Change the needle. Mm -hmm. You know, if you heard something go tonk, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Change the needle. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can, and I can hear when, you know, we're sewing... I'm like oh that machine that needs sound a, right. That machine <laughs> needs a new needle because it makes a tapping sound. Because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. actually the needle tearing the threads of your fabric. So change the needle. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll extend the life of your project. And needles gonna, are cheap. Needles are cheap. They're fabric so cheap. is not so cheap. It's not a contest. No, <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, if you're going to put all this time and effort into it, mm -hmm. use good thread. Mm -hmm. Remember to put a little drop of oil in. Oil your rotary hook. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll make it last a lot longer, guys. Yeah, that's right. Great advice. So great advice. So as always, no show next week. No show next week. We are traveling again. So we'll try so, to send some pictures. We will try to post some pictures. Check us out on Facebook. We might post them there. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. All.